We are now on air. The November 20th, 2015 Small Business Accounting Advisors. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Well, the big talk of this week is SleederCon. Um, tons of fun. Wonderful meeting people um, in real life. All the friends that I had virtually that I really liked meeting them, uh, they're awesome. Everyone is awesome. So I had a great time. Who'd you hang out with the most? Um, well, Linda and I, because we roomed together, kind yeah. of hung out a lot together. But it was different. Um, at, the, at the breakout sessions, there was somebody in every session that I knew that I could sit and hang out with. That's great. So I met Mariette. How is she? I've always wanted to meet her. She is a little powerhouse. Yeah, she's very, you know what I like about her? The few times I've talked with her, she's very positive. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely. love that about her. She didn't get to attend the whole show, only one day, and I know she wanted to do the whole show, um, but her and her husband have an agreement. They are both very powerful people and they don't want to both be traveling at the same time and leave their kids with someone else. Oh yeah. So one or the other will travel so the other one is home to be with their kids. That's which I think is fantastic. Yeah, I think I in I, I I applaud them immensely for making their children first in their life. I think that's right. so <laughs> important. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, but I know she was disappointed. Um, the one thing that I'd really like to do, I think next year if I go, is set aside some time that I can do hangouts yeah. or, or something great. and bring people that couldn't go because there's a lot of different reasons people can't go. I was in that position last year. I was kind of tied to my house and there were personal reasons why I really couldn't get the time off. Um, and I missed it. I miss seeing that. So I'd like to be able to do a hangout or set aside some time where everybody knows that, you know, let's do a hangout and, and we can talk about what's going on, the news, the events. Do it like one of those things that they do like at the awards, at the Emmys, you know, and greet people and have them come in and sit down and ask them questions. And, you know, Absolutely. That would be so much fun. I would love to do that. Yes, yes. And I had thought about it beforehand, but I really didn't set it up. So I was I just got so involved and so busy with everything, running from one session to another. Because they I, I still can relate to that. That's how it was when I went to QuickBooks Connect in 2014. Oh my gosh, I was running from here to there to everybody was stopping because I saw somebody or somebody wanted to talk to me and oh, oh my gosh, it was overwhelming. It was great though. Right. That's why I say I want to set it up ahead of time so that That'll be that specific time, and I won't put anything in that time slot. It's so, so funny, though. Like when you go to those conventions, it's like I don't know. I the one time I went, I felt like I was a kid in a candy store. It's like I want a little bit of that. I want a little bit of that. You know, a little bit of everything. Well, one of the sessions that I went to was called Sage One. How was it? Very, very interesting. Um, Sage One is Sage's new program that's like QBO or Zero. You know, Seth, he introduced me to that once, and I liked it. I played around with it. It, it is. It does a lot. It uh -huh. doesn't. It doesn't have the sophistication even as much as QBO, but it does tie to the bank feeds, and I like this solution much, much better than all of the other simple solutions. Um, Sage One is free, and then you get up to five invoices a month. So if you have a real, you really do have a business, you really got to buy the paid version, which is only five dollars a month. Oh my gosh, that's nothing. <laughs> that's the premium version, five dollars a month. Wow. That's good to know. And how is um? If I can remember, it wasn't, I mean, it was easy to walk around in it, you know, like, it wasn't complicated. No, it's very, very easy, very, very simple, which is something that you wouldn't believe from Sage. I know. That's why I was uh, surprised. 
But but for the small subcontractors that that need something, there's no excuse to not pay five dollars a month. And and, and I'm sure they have bank fees and all that, right? They have bank fees. Yes, yes, yes. Now there's not a whole lot of outside programs that um, sync with it. Yeah. So if you need that type of service, you do want to bump up to something like QBO or Zero. And did you play around at all with the reports? What kind of reporting do you get? I didn't get that detailed in it. Um, I just set up the other thing that they had is something called um, Sage. Let me see what it is. Impact. And I wish they would put different names that kind of match which packages. They kind of have a lot of packages, and each one does a different thing. But the Sage Impact is a dashboard where you can get to any of your Sage products. You can do your, you can attach your emails like your Google account. Mm -hmm. So an email, it's just a one-stop place to put everything, and you can even put a link for QBO in there. So really? You, yes, isn't that amazing? You yeah. be able to have a dashboard where you can go to whatever products you have um, online. So you wouldn't have to open and close Age One or open and close. What, is this what, what, what add on is this one? It's called Sage Impact and it's free. Wow. Yes. I yes. like that. Yes. So, does they have an advisor program or anything like that? Like yes, they do. Yes, they do. Hey, Gina, are you a senior member? No, but I will be next year. I'm very interested in that. But Sleater now is not going to be Sleater. Yeah. Oh. Diversified Communications. Diversified Communications, but the name that they're going to call it is Account Tech. Yes. Instead of SleaterCon, it's going to be Account Tech next year. So is Doug still involved in the business, or is he? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't see Doug going away quite yet, but this is this is something else. He's more or less retiring from SleaterCon. Oh, I didn't get that. When did you get that? When he was sitting up on the stage with um, Leslie Shiner and and Randy Johnson and Greg Lafayette. Listen, so does that mean that there's not going to be SleaterCon next week, next year? It's going to be called Account Tech Con or something? It's going to be called Account Tech. The conference. The conference. Yeah. Read yes. it in the chat. I wonder if he's going to have it in Vegas again. Yes, it's at the Mirage. Is that where they're having it next year, Mirage? Uh, November 15, 16. 17 at the Mirage. She likes having those things in Vegas, huh? I but, would love to have a different location. Vegas yeah. does nothing for me. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't do anything for me, but it's usually pretty cheap to fly in there. And I think that that's why they that Doug chose yeah. Vegas is it's oh. easy to fly in from anywhere in the country. Salt so um, Lake would be a good place too, I think. Where are you? How many people have them in Salt Lake? Salt Lake. I like, I like to have it at near a different um, national park every year, so after the conference, we can go hang out at the park. Oh, well, that would be fun. Yeah. That's just my opinion. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. But you know what? I found my new name. I found my new name, an accounting tech. That's great. Instead of trusted advisor, I want to go with accounting tech. It's simple. Everyone knows what it is. It's it's different. It's not account tech that what they're talking about. But I want to go because account tech really doesn't sound like it's necessarily in accounting. Anything can be an account. Well, yeah, that's why, like on my business card, I have like accounting technology specialists. Right, right. I was thinking about accounting technology. But I want to go with accounting tech. It's simple, and people know now what a tech is. So better than bookkeeping, better than accountant. Kind of encompasses a little bit more, and and it encompasses the third-party apps, which is where I want to get headed. So I'm excited about that too. 
found my name. So Linda, do you want to add anything about the Sleater Con? Uh, well, it looks like James got all the information about the Mirage and everything. Oh, so, good. Um, so when they start branding Sleater as account tech? I'm not sure when that... And I don't know how that's going to work or whether they're going to become diversified communications. I don't know. I guess we have to kind of just... I knew that was going to be happening sooner or later when they announced that uh, diversified was, you know, they were joining a partnership or whatever, or they were yeah. sold the company to them or whatever it is. Remember they announced that? And Doug was in Hawaii for that long time. I'm very, very happy for Doug. I'm very excited well, for Doug. He's been so all these years, too, you know. And oh, absolutely. Over 20 years he's been doing this. Yeah, and he's been a major influence in our industry. And he has stayed on top of all the new technology. He's had some great guys with him, Charlie Russell, Randy oh, Johnson. And, and they are still, I would say that they are still... Um, up on all the latest technology. They're always looking at new things. They're always, you know, um, reviewing it and letting us know what they found. Both of them very, very, very detailed. Yeah, and the other thing I like about them is like they don't just stick with one. They check out all the platforms. Absolutely. And they give you their most honest opinion on it. You know, mm -hmm. do all the they do all the work, the research, and they really they they use it. To find yes. us, to give us the best information on it. From what I understand, they're going to be more global now next year, as opposed to be being just in the United States. Wow! We've got Greg Lamb, who is from Canada, and he is another amazing, just like Charlie, just like um, he's young. Greg. He is young, but he's another one that's detailed, very, very detailed. He's the one that did the the comparisons to yeah. QBO. Um, I've seen his stuff, his videos, and all that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely great. And uh, did you meet, did you get to meet and talk with Misty? Misty, Misty yeah. Maga. Yeah. Well, well, I've um, met her a couple times. Yeah, she's nice. She is. Oh, okay. She's pretty I funny. I didn't get to meet her and talk to her personally. She's pretty, she's pretty funny too. She was like the. Uh, when they had the QuickBooks uh, QBO face-off, she was kind of like the master of ceremonies, and she was just hysterical. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's Shelly Robinson's. Hey, oh, Shelly, yeah. she posted something, too. There's going to be another thing in December. Right. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it, though. But uh, Yeah. And I'm sure it's in Washington, right, over there where you guys are? Yeah, it's probably down in South Seattle. They have a... She has a, an in with uh, one of the community colleges down there. They have pretty good facilities. That's great. Her events are something to attend now, too. Yeah. Now, was she at the Sleater? I did not see her there. Did you see it? Do you know who Bryce is, Bryce Forney? No. Okay. But see, I mean, I, I know who he is. I don't really know him personally. I've seen yeah, him. Yeah, I know. He's not in my area. I met um, Clayton Oates from Australia. Oh, he is an awesome person. And actually, like they gave us a TweeterCon or SleeterCon, um, an app, so that we could tweet all the time. Right. And and SleeterCon was actually trending in Australia while it was happening, which I think was really awesome. Wow. Yeah. And and I loved that app. The app was wonderful. Um, it gave you the schedule of events, all of them, and then you got to see my schedule. The other thing I liked about it is you did have a list of attendees, but you also had my attendees or my contacts so that the people you know there you could um, connect with. That's great. So that was great, too. That was kind of fun. I enjoyed that. How much of a presence was into it at SleaterCon? They were there. They were there. They were a big um, key. They they were they had a big stand. They were pretty central. Um, Jim McGinnis gave the keynote, didn't he? Pardon me. Didn't Jim McGinnis give a keynote? Yes. 
Yes. yes. I didn't get to see oh. that one. Um, Stacy and Dawn were there um, as winners of the most powerful women in the county. But other than that, they flew in for that and then flew right back out. Mm -hmm. okay. So, but I did get to see Mindy King. I don't know if you, uh, Mindy oh, King. Mindy, she's a sweetheart. She's yeah. big in the ABO group. It was very nice meeting her, too. Um, Intuit did have a focus group on desktop, which I attended. Wow, they did? They did. Desktop about desktop? I'm surprised. Desktop. Desktop. Yeah. Yes. And surprised. they were surprised. I thought, it, you know, maybe QBO, but desktop. Yeah, no, this was, well, they did have one for QBO. They had one for um, Enterprise, and they had one for desktop. So I had, I mean, when they gave me the invite and they told me all three that they had, I applied for all three, but I was chosen for the desktop. And it was a kind of a small, intimate group, and they were asking questions about how do you use desktop and what can we do to help make it better. So they brought up a couple features that they may be working on for um, 2017 and asked us, you know, as you're working, what would be better? this or this or these are improvements that we're thinking of making now I can't go into any details at all right. but desktop is still there and they are still making improvements so that was nice to know anything else anyone wants to any questions or Linda do you want to add anything did they have any uh, videos that are recorded that you can watch online I mean like a keynote or they like did that. what they did was record all of the sessions um, and you can buy them oh, okay. Dennis I'll have to send that information to oh, really? you you could get the session yes I yeah did that one time I, 10 years ago. I wonder if he has it on his website you know what I'll put it in our slack I'll put the okay. information I have it in my stack of stuff so I can't just pick it out right now. <laughs> hey, listen, and was QBox there at all? No, what? no. I was very surprised, but um, I, I think that uh, Chris had said that um, he was he had made a decision for whatever reason that they weren't going to attend. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. But you know, I'm thinking that. This we're so close to the end of this year that there won't be any more demos probably in, in 2015. But I'm thinking about 2016 and revisiting some people. Oh. And so QBox with their new updates and you're able to um, put in the, the Microsoft Word and Excel and all of that and share them. Um, I'd like to have them come back. Um, so apps maybe. Pardon? So, and have, I would like to see um, Joanne do a demo on 17 hats again. Yes, that was one of them I was thinking about doing. Um, there's a new guy um, for for sales tax. Linda, oh, yeah. what was the name of his business? Taxify. 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 Well, well, there's three or four that are very good for. Uh, they were in the. They were in the handout for accounting in an e-commerce world. Okay. By you know Scott. Like, I'm sorry. But I, you know what I'd like to see is these. You know these companies that these add-ons. How it works with QuickBooks, not just do a demo on their app, but how it integrates with QuickBooks. The thinking of them. Well, yeah, because well, nobody does that. Yeah. Um, and actually, what was the vendor? Workato, W O R K A T O, is now um, a new a new vendor that helps you sync more than one app to QBO. Because you'll have instances where you'll have QBO and T Sheets and T Sheets syncs to QBO and ADP and you know you, you really need a workflow and how to pick what you're using and which way to sync first before syncing the other way. Yeah. Because they can get confusing. So that was a new one. Um, we'll see if we can get them in. 
That's interesting. Yeah, I would love to see that. Okay. Did I miss anybody, Linda? We had talked about this a little bit. Miss anyone or what? That we want to bring back to demo. Uh, I don't think so. I'm going to be making some lists of some of these things over the weekend. What, you know, one of the things that they suggested was to write down... Um, to write down what you were going to do when you got back, to write it down. And I decided I'm going to get Sleater certified. I'm going to get restaurant certified. Um, I'm going to, another thing I want to do is every single day I want to schedule one hour a day to, to review one of the classes that I took or one of the classes I didn't take, but there's a download in the Sleater Convention app and just take a few notes on it so I kind of really get the value out of it. You know how we were saying we download all the stuff in the app, but we don't ever take a look at it. So right. I'm going to schedule an hour a day. And if I get one one class done a day, fine. If I only if I get two or three done a day by just scrolling through it. But an hour a day, that's what I'm going to do. Well, I think you missed. I am going to put the Sleater sessions where you can actually purchase them in the Slack. Joanne's with us. Hi, Joanne. Wait. I guess I didn't understand that, but that's okay. Um, you can purchase the, the sessions for that were there at SleaterCon, and I got the information for that, but I don't have it right. At, I'm, I'm going to put when that information in purchase Slack. It, purchase the handout, purchase the audio. What, what are you Purchase the audio of the session itself. Oh, okay. Got it. That's what, That was what I was missing. Okay. Sorry. Very good. Hey, Joanne. Hey Joanne, how's it going? Where are you? I'm 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 in my living room, which is dark at night. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have a little bit of light. Syracuse, outside. Where outside Syracuse are you? I'm in Syracuse. Oh, okay. Are you near the college? No, I'm like, like I'm like the northern suburb. Okay. So Joanne's dark today, and Dennis is clear as a bell. Yeah. yeah that Dennis. Dennis is using a different uh, computer. Yeah. He got a new one. And a webcam, new webcam. Very nice, very nice. Stepping up your game, Dennis. I gotta like that. I gotta tell yeah. you. We're missing the music, though. Isn't your uh, son home yet? Uh, he doesn't play the piano till like about uh, eight thirty before he goes to bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> So Joanne, yes, you had a Zoom this afternoon. Did I? Yes, I did. <laughs> How did it go? Good. I've been using Zoom all the time, constantly. So you're liking it? I love it. Yeah, I'm now using it for when Wesley and I are doing our videos once a month. We're doing that using that as our recording session. Um, today I did a a private Zoom in my uh, for my Facebook group, my Be Socially Awesome Facebook group, and we had some people inside there just asking questions, social media questions and stuff. So that was fun. Got to answer a bunch of questions, but everybody loves it. it everybody, it's just so easy for people to get in and use it. it it's it's like you need no instruction pretty much whatsoever. So Zoom is you're sending the link to people. <sighs> Yeah. I'm getting confused about that. Well, I tried to do a blab last night, and I forgot that you have to send the link. I'm thinking Google and sending invites from inside of the program. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only downside of Zoom is that you have to have an audience to be able to send the link to. So uh, what I did is um, I just sent the link out to my you know, Facebook group and said, hey, if anybody wants to hop in at 2 o'clock, I'm going to be here answering questions. I'll be just – and I just sat there and – first five or ten minutes and then all of a sudden a couple people started coming in and coming in so it was people kind of came and went but um, it's it's great because it's just like they so I think I might start doing that every Friday at 2 o'clock that's the time you're picking I'll be doing hangouts every Friday all day long <laughs> yeah just kind of like like I said it's just a 
if I'm if I'm on for an hour, if I'm on for an hour and a half or whatever, just whatever it takes to answer the people's questions. Zip it. Hey. <laughs> Cosmo wants to join us. Cosmo barking at his brother. What are you barking at your brother for? Computers. <laughs> oh, he wants to say hello. Hey. Okay. <laughs> hey, Cosmo. <laughs> <laughs> I actually officially purchased Zoom too, just to let you know. You purchased him? Purchased Zoom. Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm still playing around. I'm still. Some people are not able to uh, join um, and have a problem getting on. I'm not sure why. Um, so, so that's why I keep bouncing back and forth between Hangouts and Zoom and Blab. I'd really like to get everybody on Slack, but I am going to do the, the Facebook page, or Facebook group, and it's going to be private. Score. <laughs> and I'll be posting everything in both Slack and the Facebook, so people Good. can get whatever they want, wherever they want to. Good. Hey, I, tried, I tried watching Steve Dotto text. Um, <laughs> video on Slack and it just I just couldn't couldn't deal with it. I'm hearing a lot of people say that it's something new and they just don't have time. Just don't have time to figure it out and it's not as intuitive as some of the other ones. Yeah, and, and that's what he said but here's what I'm thinking is that for me I think it would be a tool best used with somebody such as Steve who has a lot of team members that are virtual and they're constantly needing to be in there to communicate with each other. I don't necessarily have that because I have two in-house people that I can just scream, hey, you got to do this. <laughs> and it's so much easier for me than to have to learn an application. Plus, I'm already using Trello for our stuff that we do in our office. So for me and to Trello have, does the checklists so yes, much easier. So for me to have to use a, an extra app to be able to communicate for something else, that's why it's just I don't want to learn it. Somebody would just teach it to me. <laughs> well, I was hoping to use it and learn it um, as we go. And the one thing that it does is it syncs with Zoom. Yeah, yeah, that, that I did see. And it does sync with Trello, too. Now, hey Joanne, are you using? Are you doing any Blab sessions at all? I haven't yet. No, I haven't. Since I've been back, I haven't really had a chance to put it in my schedule. But I definitely want to do. I just def I just haven't decided what day and time yet. So, but no, since since I've been gone, it's literally taking me. Well, you know, when you travel, and I was gone for eleven days. I, you know, I was gone four, four days at QuickBooks Connect, and then seven days with my sister. Coming back and playing catch up and stuff, I'm still still catching up. <laughs> still catching up. And things may fall between the cracks at that point. I understand. So but I do want to do a blab next week. I want to do a blab next week and I want to talk about your favorite client. What do you like about your favorite client? How long have they been your client? How do you interact with them? Do you work virtually? Do they send stuff to you? Do you go pick it up? Are you at their office? Are you working online? You know, those type of questions. And uh, speaking of that, do any of you use HubDoc? Do any of we? HubDoc, no. No, I don't. Okay. I've heard of it with zero, but I, I don't use it. I think we're getting act out is what the problem is. There are just so many that you can um, use and learn before you get to the point where you're just on overload. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm just trimming back. I canceled GoToMeeting. Oh, wow. I canceled GoToMeeting and I canceled Dropbox. <gasps> Dropbox, too. Why? What are you using now? I use Box.com and Google Drive. Really? Yep. Why did you cancel Dropbox though over Box? Uh, because Box is way better for, especially with communicating with my clients and stuff. Really? Box, Box is way better and 
I yeah. like the way I like it's easier to set passwords up. It's easier to create custom URLs. Is it more of a business app as opposed to a consumer app? No, it just looks different. The feel of it's different, and <laughs> it, um, like I can send like my clients like it. Like if I if I was sending something to Yvette, I would set up a folder for Yvette, and it would be like Yvette's a rock star, and like the URL would be like Yvette's a rock star at box dot com type thing. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> and um and they all know what the password is, you know, because it has to do with a combination of letters, names, and social. So I are they already pre know what their passwords are, so I don't have to send anything through emails on that, and then they can just go into their folder, upload stuff to me. I can download it. I can give them stuff, and it's just so much easier than dealing with Dropbox. So, so, so are they logging on with your password, or do they get to create? Um, they have their they they. It's pre. I set it up for them, but it's based upon a pre understood combination of their name and their social. That's what I do for my password, so it's I can tell them without having to tell them. Yep. You know, exactly. The the uh, software the tax softwares do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how they started that first four letters and the last four numbers. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah, so I've just kind of slowly I mean I still have Dropbox, but I I'm I've canceled it so it's not renewing because I bought like a year and I think it ends like in January. But I am slowly moving all of my stuff off of that, moving any of my clients that are still floating around in there and setting all that, setting all their stuff up inside a box. So what you do, like I'm thinking if I were to do that, you know, I have like a zillion files in my Dropbox, okay? Mm -hmm. So I would have to just take out all the folders out and then move them over to Box. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't really consider Box as like a folder, a permanent folder system for every single thing that I do with my client. It's just only the stuff that I go back and forth with my client with. So what do you do with the other stuff for your clients? The it's on my computer. It's what? It's on my computer hard drive, uh, and, then I, and, then I, and then I back it up with Carbonite. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm using Dropbox <laughs> mostly because my clients understand how to use it and can use it, mm -hmm. and they have their own passwords, which they will remember. Mm -hmm. um, but I also have, um, at the end of the year, they'll have like a virtual file cabinet mm -hmm. with all their bank statements, credit card statements, um, PDFs of bills, um, you know, invoicing information. Mm -hmm. So I can tell them, you know, just make a copy of this, and all you have to do is copy and, and paste, and they have a year's worth of information they can keep either on a thumb drive or on a CD and keep it with their tax returns. Yep. So are you able to do that with Box? You can do anything with Box. You can put anything in Box that you want. I mean, Box is just, think of Box just like Dropbox. It really okay. is. But what I like about it is I feel, in my opinion, that it looks more, I don't know if it necessarily is because I haven't done the research, but it looks more secure than Dropbox because you can, you can, send, them to drop, you can send them to Box in two ways. The first way is by just sending them a link to the folder. So in other words, if you just wanted to show them something and they didn't have to give anything back to you, you can just send them a link to a folder. They automatically have the right to download from in that folder. Okay? Um, or you can actually send them an invite to be an editor of that folder, which prompts them to set up a free account. does mm -hmm. not cost them anything. And they get access to that folder and they can okay. upload and they can download from that folder. So okay. everything inside that folder, so in addition, so there's like two types of passwords. So in addition to the password that they use to set up for their free account, the folder is also password protected. Okay. On what I've set up the password in. So they cannot even get into their own folder until they do the password. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I need a system that I can receive information from my clients from. 
Yeah, and that's what I use Box for. They just upload everything. They just drag and drop it into a folder, and it's right. very, very similar to what you would do with, with Dropbox. Okay, because they do the drag and drop, they do the um, scan, or they'll go right into their um, whatever account that they're looking at and bring the statements bring the statements up on their computer, and then just save it to the Dropbox. Mm -hmm. yep, it, it shows up like just like on my Mac right here. My box can... You can you can make your box account sync to your computer if you wanted to, like yeah. like Dropbox, just like Dropbox. Yep. It's just when a little I, bit like Joey, I said. It's I, a little bit different. I have a question. Is, um, yep. Go ahead, then. I said what I do is I have a, I use Smart Vault. It's kind of a working area, and then for the files I want my clients to have access to, I have a portal through. Uh, CPA site solutions that I upload to. So, for example, there are copies of their tax return. I'll put that in their in their portal, and if they don't pay me, then I can take it out of the portal mm -hmm. and put it back in uh, Smart Vault. That kind of thing. I've got one client. I'm gonna I've pulled the file because he hasn't paid me yet. So if he ever needs to get a tax return, copy of the tax return is gonna have to eventually pay me. You know, but but at least I I. Got it, you know, schooled away in another secure mm. location in, yeah. in uh, Smart Vault. Well, I'm using my Dropbox more or less, like I said, as as a virtual file cabinet, so they don't have to keep control of that. They don't have to file their their um, statements anywhere. They don't. They always know where to get it, and they can get it. And it never actually leaves the drawer like you would in a paper file come cabinet. Mm -hmm. It's always there for them, and they always know where to get it. Mm -hmm. So that's like one of the benefits that I say of working with me. At the end of the year, you have all your documents neatly filed in the virtual file cabinet. Do you have? Do they have? A, do you limit? They can't like say delete the file. Do I limit it to? Well, do you let them delete files? I mean, it would be kind of, that would be my concern. That's one reason I have two places where I store stuff, because Smart Vault, I know they're not going to delete it, whereas the portal, they could go and actually delete it. Right, right. Yeah, I've had a client do that before. I had a client by accident think they were cleaning up their computer and totally deleted everything that was inside of their Dropbox folder that I no longer had access to, and they deleted it. Them, They couldn't find it on their computer, and... <laughs> oh, that's ugly. <laughs> well, that's why I actually recommend that they back up every year at the end of the year. I send out um, reminders to all of my clients. Um, please back this up and, and put it somewhere where you'll have it yeah. to pick it up later. So, and ShareFile does the same thing. Oh, um, don't even get me going with ShareFile. <laughs> is, that the, is that the Citrix one? Yes. Can I tell you the story behind this? Sure. <laughs> you got to hear the story. <laughs> who, do you have who, who uses ShareFile here? I do. Okay. Well, oh, well. Let's let. Here's my story. Last year they called me, trying to sell me this the ShareFile, so they wanted to set me up for a demo, and I'm like, okay. So I, I don't even think did I end up doing the demo back then? I can't remember if I did or not. But this guy hounded me and just, like, literally, no matter what you said, they still would call. Well, let me call and follow you. Yeah. Let me call and follow this guy called me for a year. Well, <laughs> finally this year, the guy calls me, and I must have been in a good mood. You know, a client must have paid me or something like that. And uh, I said, sure, let's do a demo. But it's got to be when I come back from California. So I sit through this guy's demo, and the whole time I – Honestly, for me, I don't think their file is worth the money it costs because I have literally, I can count on my two hands the amount of clients that I have to deal with electronic signatures with because all of my clients are drop off at my office. I hold their hand. They sign the return. I have local small business clients that I do taxes for. That's pretty much the extent of my tax, my tax season. And so he was going in and he was showing me all the different things for it and he gives me a quote, and I said, "Yes, yeah, way too expensive." Well, we're gonna we're gonna do a Black Friday special, <laughs> and I'm like, "No, you don't understand. It's it's not worth." I I said I would listen to it. It's not worth it. Sorry. Jane's trying to get in. I know. I'm trying to paste the link for him. Now she's ringing into everybody. So. <laughs> 
long story short of it, they end up bringing the manager on. Oh, God. Who oh, I can't remember his name. And, the, by the, by the and so the manager's talking to me, and he goes, he goes, well, he goes, listen, this is what I can do. I can even give you a bigger discount, and I'll give it to you through eight, February. Oh, my gosh, everybody's in court. Hang on a second. Let's try and get Dwayne in here. Yeah, like, let's just talk to him. It's the wrong hangouts, problem. It's not, it's not like you're buying a car, I'm trying to sell you a car on the way there. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the guy, so the guy reduces the price again, and I said, well, let, I go, I go, let me just talk, let me just talk to you for a few minutes. I said, I first of all, I said I would not pay you up front for any product without, without demoing it for at least two weeks to thirty days. So if you're willing, willing to give me a free demo for two weeks, that a full-use demo, I'll try it. I'll see if I think it's worth my while, and then we'll talk. I, and then I said, and then I was even bold enough to say, and number two, I said, if you want to give it to me for free, <laughs> and I really like it, I could be a really good brand ambassador, you know, for you. And he's like, oh well, we do have an affiliate program. I said, no, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> And I said, I go, there's a lot of things I don't pay for. <laughs> and so right after he said that, don't doesn't my son come upstairs and gives me a box that I got in the mail from T Sheets? And T Sheets <laughs> sent me a hat, a T shirt, and a pair of socks. <laughs> so I literally was pulling out my swag from T Sheets. I go, This is what other software companies do for me. And oh, they, awesome! And what did they say to that? So the guy who was the manager says, he goes, "Well, he goes, I'll ask the um, accounting department and see what you know, and see what we can do, and I'll get back to you." <laughs> so I thought it was over with. So this is the story's not over with. <laughs> it's so, coming back like a bad penny, huh? So I get an email the next day, following up, and he goes, "Here's what we talked about for pricing." I don't know why he's telling me because I told him I wasn't interested unless I give it to him for free. <laughs> and um, and he gives me a quote on for five a license for five people. And I said, well, first of all, I, there's only me, myself, and I, so I don't need five licenses. And uh, and I said, but I told you I wasn't interested right now. So he immediately calls my phone after I replied to that email. Ah! And, I, and he left a voicemail. I didn't listen to it. He called me the next morning twice. Finally, the third time, I answered the phone, and I was pissed at this point. And he's like, yeah, I just wanted to follow up with you on your dinner. Here's the pricing. Are you interested? And I'm like, no. I was just trying to clarify that you weren't listening to me, that there's only one person here. There's not five. So, and then, so get this. The next day I get a phone call, and it's that number again. I said, you have got to be kidding me. What does this guy not understand? It's somebody else. <laughs> it's a lady. And she's so sweet, and she's trying to say, oh, Hello. I wanted to know if you would like to sign up for a job. <laughs> like, and I went off. I'm like, WTF? Don't you guys talk to each other? Do, is Patrick sitting next to you? <laughs> so needless to say, I'm not going with ShareFile right now. <laughs> well, you had, you had an exact opposite experience of what I had. Oh. I, I went to a now you team. use it for the backup part too though right? Like he was showing me this one area of share file where the folders mimic what's on your computer are also up in the cloud and kind of almost replace Carbonite. Oh well, I don't use it like that. But every time I go to a client's location, and that's where I mostly do my work, is out at the client locations. Mm -hmm. When I finish my work, I back it up and I just save it in a ShareFile folder. And and then the the accountant of that client has access to it. Uh, the client has access to it, and I do too. It's just yeah. I, my clients claim they back up their files, but I don't believe them. Yeah. So. This I'm is, with you. I don't believe them when they say. I just want to rescue them. So, so I never had that problem, and yeah. I just explained to them I didn't need a portal. I didn't need anything with my brand. I just needed to keep this thing. And people have said they're surprised I got it at thirty a month, but yeah. I think that's a regular price. Well, that's the reason why I, I agreed to the demo was because of what he was talking about. Because you know, I mean, we started off this whole conversation about the how we're going crazy being just like over inundated with these apps. Yes. And, and if I could find something that could potentially 
save me money and replace an app I already have and that's what he was saying is that a lot of people now set up their share files so that they don't even need um, Carbonite or uh, paying a backup service monthly because ShareFile basically is that for them. That intrigued me. But, but they will be the expensive share file because you have you have to get a certain amount of storage to back up that's your what I was, computer. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. And I don't. I have I said I don't need to put much out there at all. I just need to back up like five clients and I need them to have access and I need to have access. And I found my clients seem capable of going to ShareFile. ShareFile does not force them to join, mm -hmm. which everything else did. I was with another thing. Hightail, it was something else before that. Um, send it, right? Yeah, send it, right. Send send it. It. Yeah, and uh, I, I, they had to join that, and clients don't like that. They don't like having to join. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went to ShareFile, and I, I found it. I don't have a problem with it. I'm thinking of canceling GoToMeeting and going to Zoom. Yeah. That's because I don't use GoToMeeting enough. Yeah. So. So on go to meet or like on, you can can't like I got um, what? It's the one that's affiliated with um, oh, log me in. It's uh, oh oh oh. Is it join dot me. Join dot me. I'm think. Can you cancel? I mean, I paid a year in advance. Can I cancel that or? I mean, can you get your money back or are you kind of stuck? No, I think you paid. You're done. Yeah, I just want to get billed again. <laughs> How, how well? How, yeah, I know. I hear you on that one. How much is that a year? I think it was like about a hundred and fifty, something like that. So it's it's a little more than ten dollars a month. Yeah, it's around fifteen. I mean, it, I think it, you got a discount for paying for a year, but right. I, I find that I've just whenever I've tried to use it, it just seemed like the free version was a lot better. And it's become a lot. That's become a lot more yeah. complicated too. It used to be that I've just had more problems trying to use it in the last six eight months than I had. It used to be really easy to use. Now it seems like it's, you know, my clients are having a hard time figuring it out, and I'm thinking maybe just trying Zoom. And <clears throat> I am liking Zoom in a lot of different ways. Yeah. <clears throat> Zoom um, is so easy to work. It just works. And that's why I like it, period. And hopefully they won't keep upgrading it like they did join.me that was super easy at first and then became more complicated. Right. And then it stopped working as well, too. So. <laughs> but I, yeah, I'm liking Zoom. Go ahead. Um, going back a little bit, you're talking about Box.com and uh, 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 Dropbox. Yes. When a client sends uh, a record or a file into their folder, does the system automatically send you a notification that there's something there waiting for you? or For Dropbox, it does but I do have the notifications turned on. Um, I don't know about box.com. And the other, way around, the other way around, if you send them uh, a file, does it notify them? Dropbox, yes. Yeah, it does for box. You can, well, usually what I do when I first am introducing box to a client, it, I send an email to them saying here is blah 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 here is the link to um, basically it, it prompts them to set up a free account the first time and then anything moving forward I always send them an email especially if I'm putting things inside of a box folder and um, they you can set notifications up you can actually send things to clients and then attach a note to it and it'll send them a little note and it all depends on their end if they have their notifications turned on and off and Okay. Yeah, I'm beginning to get too notified of everything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do want to know the Dropbox notifications. Slack, I half want to know. Um, you know, I'd like to know once a day for Slack. I don't need any more than that. I don't need to be told all the time. The same is going on for Blab, too. 
I'm about ready to turn the notifications off for them. I'm not finding Blab as easy to work with as I thought it would be. Yeah, I turned off notifications. Well, I, I head over to Blab once a, every couple of days and check to see what I've missed, any Blabs that I want to check out, but I've turned off notifications. Okay, well, <clears throat> I think Misha was trying to join us. I've seen her pop in and pop out. Wayne looks like he did join us, but he's MIA. I'm not sure where he's he in a car or something. Yeah, he's got some car problems. Oh, he must be dressed up like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is the problem I'm having. I'm not. That's why I keep bouncing around with different platforms and different ways to do everything. Because just one solution doesn't seem to be able to do it all for everybody. You know, even the Hangouts, Dwayne constantly has problems with it. Yeah. Zoom seems like it's the easiest to use, but I do need the email for, for Zoom to um, invite people. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll keep playing and bouncing around and going between different platforms so we can figure out what's going to work the best. And, uh, well, and like I said, We'll all be well trained by then. <laughs> we'll all be well trained. Well, we are supposed to be the leaders in the technology field so we can lead our clients and have already tested it out and, and gone through the frustration of making it work. Very good. So, but we are almost out of time. Is there anything else anyone wants to talk about before we leave? Are, I, next week, are you only going to do a blab next week? Um, I can start it out with a hangout and then go to blab if that helps. I don't know. That way I might come. I, if it's just blab alone, if I haven't gotten my computer to work with blab and I haven't gotten a new computer yet. Uh, well, hang I, on, Linda. Are you on your laptop? Yes, I am. Okay. So after we close down, I'm going to send some invites to Blab um, to you. Um, I can't do Blab and the Hangout at the same time, but I have. Do you know how those come? I don't know if I tur turned on notifications in Blab. I did. Well, what I'm going to do is send you a link. That's what I missed yesterday. Okay. We know uh, you can that will come through email then? Um, I can email it to you. Well, when you say send me a link, what, I don't know what that means. That part of the problem. Oh, okay, yeah, I could be sending it through Sorry. Google. I could be sending. I'm feeling it pretty stupid here. No, 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 <laughs> Sorry. no, 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 no. I am not just, stupid. I'm just feeling that way. <laughs> you're feeling technology frustrated. Yeah, a little. Ch oh, if you want to know? Oh, I found my comb. Oh, good. It was sitting right next to my thyroid pills, which I had left on the counter when I left here. Oh, okay. It was at home waiting for you. Yes. And I got on the plane, and I sat next to the same man that sat next to me when I flew from Ontario to Vegas. No. Oh, cool. <laughs> I looked at him, and I said, you look familiar. You look like the man that was sitting to my left on the ride up to Vegas. And he says... That's because I am that man. <laughs> <laughs> now, was he at the conference, or was he just doing no, something? No, he, um, he actually is a pilot. He flies jets. Oh, awesome. But not, I said, like, what we're on? He said, no, smaller ones, smaller business jets. And he, the jets he flies are based in Vegas, so he goes from Vegas to the East Coast and back. Ah, oh, I wish I knew him. So we had a nice conversation um, about, we started with his Kindle because he's reading similar books to what I'm reading. And, and he didn't realize that, that the Huntington Library out here has a big new Lincoln Center with Lincoln's private collections of letters and that. And he's really been reading those and enjoying them a lot. So I was able to give him a connection in the local neighborhood. So that was nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh -oh. So, okay, and I just wanted to mention that I did get my um, QPO verification, so they are starting to do that now. Good. 
Um, I, I signed on to QBL and I got the question, um, you know, how do you want this verification sent to you? Do you want it emailed or some other way? And then the some other way had in parentheses after it, this will take longer, which I'm assuming is telephone or, you know, some other way. I don't know what other way they would send it other than, you know, but they are starting to do it. I did get it. I was able to get it without it getting caught in my spam filters because they are catching many, many of those spams that are coming in. Perfect. So. You know, that, that's something I wanted to mention. In one of the other groups, um, they mentioned that it might be a good idea to remove your email address on the ProAdvisor site Ah. Where people where people search for a provisor in their neighborhood, and instead just leave your phone number. Got it. Because a lot of those a lot of those spams they feel are being scraped off of that the pro yeah, you know, find a pro advisor. Absolutely, and they're talking about speaking of the pro advisor um, uh, profile page that we have. You know, they used to there used to be a link. A, a little section where we could put the link of our website. They don't have that anymore. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Uh, wow, well, I'll have to look at it. I haven't looked at my profile in a long time. And the other thing they said that they were doing was putting a picture instead of your actual email address and linking it to your email so that they should stop the scraping that way. Got it. So. Got it. And Hopefully so, that'll help. What is everybody doing for um, for Thanksgiving? I'm going to my sister's house. What are you doing, Linda? I, I'm going to my daughter's house and bringing a turkey. That sounds like fun. Joanne, are you talking or no? I guess not. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. I'm multitasking here. Yeah, I see if I'm going to answer. I am... Cooking. 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 Oh, yes. You having everybody up at your house? Um, no, not everybody. Just actually my mother in law and then and my kids obviously and then my husband. And then after that we go to dessert at my mom's house. So Nice. Yeah. My husband wanted to make sure he had leftovers because he's <laughs> Well, he's going in for his surgery um, the Monday afterwards, so he wants to make sure he gets his belly filled with <laughs> enough Thanksgiving turkey to last him while he's in the hospital. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll send prayers for your husband and his Thank operation. Thank you. Dennis? I'm probably going to my sister's house. Okay. Dwayne, can you talk? I think Dwayne's going to his daughter's. Okay. Larry? Uh, my wife and I are thinking about if the weather holds up, we're going to play a wall and go play golf. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's wonderful. Maybe you can hit a turkey with your golf ball. There you go. <laughs> they, uh, one of the things they showed on the screen was at one baseball game, a pitcher threw a pitch and it hit a bird. Before it got in front of the batter, did you rem remember that, Gina? Yes, that was amazing. And it was true. It wasn't a photoshopped was, image. Yes, right. that was a Gene Marks um, keynote. Yes, that was interesting. I think a Seattle picture did that one time. So maybe that was the one that they were. I can't imagine it happened more than once. Honestly, the How timing many birds on that. fly over baseball fields? That seems like a bad place to fly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, so everybody's going to ha have a good Thanksgiving then. Yeah. Everybody's going to have a nice time. I'm going to be going to Truckee and leave, you know, on the beginning of the week. So I'm looking forward to that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah hey, Yvette, while you're up in Truckee, you're going to have to do something, a hangout with, where you can maybe go outside at one of the restaurants on their deck if it's nice during the day. I'd love to see Truckee. Of course, yeah. there's a lot of webcams up there, too. You know what we do? We, we um, like the day after Thanksgiving, you know, the, that Friday, Saturday, we usually go to 
the Ritz Carlton. And we throw up drinks up on top and we'll have hot chocolate. We take the gondola up to the Ritz Carlton. Um, and it's just beautiful. Everything's usually white. Yes. In the snow. It's just really nice. The whole family goes and and uh, I usually take a picture of my daughter so I can send to everybody on the Christmas card, you know, when we're up there. Yes. So it's really nice. You know, Linda, you used to live out there. Yeah, I know. I lived up there for 10 years, so 77 to 87. Yeah, that's, uh, I love Truckee. It's a beautiful place. Nice. You'll have a good time with your family. That's awesome. Yeah, wonderful. So I'm going to close the hangout now. We're about five minutes over. Everyone have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful wet rest of your week. Everyone else stay with me a minute. All right. Bye, everyone.